Oli Gunnar Solskjaer is going to hate to leave the Glazers, the owners of Man United, naked, after he revealed how they failed to sign Judy Bellingham and Erwin Haaland here onto the United Matters channel. This story really ran in, uh, I think it was around evening time because I saw a post being put out by Gary Neville on his uh, tweet, on his ex account that they are going to be revealing the video they shot with Oli Gunnar Solskjaer on the overlap and it was released today in the afternoon and then it has gone ahead to make rounds onto different platforms on social media. Welcome to this channel, United Matters channel, it is. And Oli Gunnar Solskjaer had a chance obviously coming through and discuss a little bit about Harry Maguire and how he went ahead to sign him and exposing the glazers on Judy Bellingham and Erwin Haaland. <clears throat> Smash the like button, comment and share. If I told you watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Rock and David is my name and I'm um, really glad to have you here and you guys are really doing great and great and great and great and great and great. So, smash the like button close to 300 times. Don't forget to subscribe. And this is Rokan David Aradi. God Lord is great for the Muslims. Allah is great. Now, how did he really commence this um, undressing of the Glazers? He said, the summer before I got here at Man United, I rang the club and said, you've got to sign this boy. He'll be top, absolutely top class. That was June, July 2018. And they said, nah, we've got enough reports. Moldy sold him to Salzburg because he didn't play for them for three or four months. I said, just sign him now because he's got a release clause of 20 million euros. It would be, it would have been a bargain. <coughs> now, this is not the first time Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is revealing this. You know, he trained this guy and the recruitment team of Man United was not convinced with the quality of Erwin Haaland. But remember, <coughs> none of the people at the recruitment team of Man United was really good at really playing the game of football. And if a person who was a striker tells you that there is a player who is, I think, 16 years of age and is scoring goals for fun, why don't you sign him? You know, 20 million euros was a bargain and it was not like we were going to pay it at once. The Glazers said no. And this goes back to the Glazers and wanting to really save a lot of money. We missed out on Erwin Haaland because they wanted to save money. Yet he, they felt like 20 million euros for him is really too much. <clears throat> we can really get it in as a dividend. Getting in Haaland, a player who could not really get himself, get himself going into the first team directly <coughs> was very bad. For the Glazers, because they knew to it that they could really interfere with their transfer plan that had already gone ahead to be planned by the club of Man United, and they are willing to see to it that they see that money go to their dividends. And it's all about the dividends, and that's why I'm telling you that the Glazers were greedy. For a team that really knows business, they would have gone ahead to execute this deal immediately. Why? The scouts of Man United, if they are good enough, they would have gone ahead obviously go and scout this boy. And I think it wasn't the first time that Sosha told them that sign him. I think he really sent them <coughs> uh, emails and called them that, please, I want your scouts to come and see this young boy. He's really good and he can really net those balls in, you know. But they wouldn't really allow that to happen because they felt like 20 million euros is really too much for this player. But right now, he's the first or he's the best center forward in the world. And every time I was going to find Man United at Man City, he's really beating us left, right, and center. And that's why you see to it that when Ten Hag came in through, almost everyone who was part of the recruitment team was sacked because the reports they really presented were really poor. That shows you that they couldn't really recruit a player like Erwin Haaland. People like Eric Ten Hag, working with the likes of the CEO, cannot really miss out on such a deal. Right now, if Man United sees a player at the age of 16, 17, when his bio closes 20 million euros, they say we are going to sign him. And guess what? That money is not going to go there instantly. You know, they would get like 5 million euros because this player was like 16, 17. Right now, Erin Garland is 23. You get? That means um, five years back, he was um, 16, 17. You get? And... <laughs> Oliguna Sosha told them to sign him. You get? And how do you break down 
the payment structure of the deal initial fee 6 million euros if he makes it through the first team 5 million euros if he scores such a number of goals uh, such a number of goal such number of um money until it amounts to 20, 200 until it amounts to 20 million euros it shows you how bad we've gone ahead to fall off because this this is a deal that man united made when they are signing wayne rooney at old trafford first it was cristiano ronaldo remember ronaldo was signed at the age of 18 from sporting lisbon his deal amounted to 20 million pounds and 20 million pounds by then in 20 in 2003 he was like paying 50 million pounds for an 18 year old you know what it means to pay 50 million pounds for a player right now who has not yet gone ahead to be proven because ronaldo came in through with a high ceiling but he was not yet proven but united paid an initial fee of 12 million pounds and then the rest of the 8 million pounds we are supposed to be made as uh, we are supposed to be paid as add-ons and by the time ronaldo left the club of man united he had gone ahead obviously click all the boxes tick all the boxes and with United introducing in their clause, when they are really beginning the club, when they are really beginning for players, that if at all he wins a Ballon d'Or, you'll earn such and such amount of money. They would have gone ahead to break that deal very well. But they wouldn't do that because they are really naive. But David Gill and Salex Ferguson could sit down and really negotiate a deal to get in Cristiano Ronaldo. You understand? So that shows you how ill this side was for the glazers and the people there edward ward uh john Mata, um, matt judge the chief negotiator all those that have gone ahead to leave the club of man united and they are poor 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 decision making and guess what right now erin Garland is worth 200 million euros you know a player they would have gone ahead to get in for 20, 20 million euros failed them to really get him by then and right now He's really one of the best strikers in the world that every team would love to love would like to have lead the line. And if you had gone ahead to make such a deal, would we have gone ahead to spend <coughs> all the money we spent on strikers? We've gone ahead to bring in Norway, you know. Then he concluded on Holland and said it was the club's decision not to go for him. <coughs> and then we never made bids or went in for him until after he started scoring for Salzburg. By then, Dortmund were there, Juventus were there, everyone was there. So, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, after that failed move to sign Ering Haaland, Ering Haaland went ahead to play for Salzburg and was really scoring very many goals. And Man United were interested in signing him. And remember, in the January of 20, um, I think 2019, January of 2019, that's when this boy really crosses the sides, you know, from Salzburg to Borussia Dortmund. Socia went ahead, obviously, go there. And the reason as to why we failed to sign him was that his agent, the late Mino Raiola, wanted what we call a buyout clause. And Man United couldn't really allow it because those are small mentality teams that really do that, you know. You are having one of the best strikers in the world at his age, and they want to sit to put a clause that in two years, he can be sold. That's the same thing they did to uh, Borussia Dortmund and the same thing they did to Man City. And they're trying to negotiate it off. But there is a buyout clause of 150 million euros for uh, Erling Haaland. So that is how we went ahead to fail to sign Erling Haaland. And that was another big mistake made by the scouting team of Man United. Leaving that alone, another tragedy befell Man United onto Jude Bellingham. Now, this is what Sosha is going to hear to say about Judy Bellingham. Jude was in the building. I was there. Salex Ferguson was there. Brian Robinson and Eric Antona were all there that day when he came to the club. We all spoke to him and sold it as well as he could. So, United were convinced, obviously convinced this guy to obviously stay at the club of Man United. Remember, he was 16 years of age when he was playing for Birmingham and he really visited not only Man United but visited Liverpool, he visited <coughs> Arsenal and United put up all their greats. Salex Ferguson to me the best club football manager in the world ever, you know, Bran Robson, Eric Antona. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer were there to convince him to come in through and join the club of Man United. But what went ahead to fail him? Let's see.
he knew what he wanted a certain amount of minutes in the first team he was 17 at the time and he was the most mature 17 old i've ever met he had it all planned out now if he really came out and really told you that he wanted play minutes you would have gonna hate to say all right jude jude which club has told you that he's willing to give you minutes Borussia Dortmund, right? Can I talk to Borussia Dortmund? All right. <laughs> you talk to Borussia Dortmund and you tell them, please, I'm willing to give you Judy Bellingham for a full season. You know? On loan. On loan. Jude Bellingham, are you willing to go on loan to Borussia Dortmund? Would have gone here to say yes. We sign you. We send you on a long season loan to play for the side of Borussia Dortmund. You get all else, which other team would obviously give you the minutes that you want? Because you've gone ahead to see that mentality into that player. That would have been the first thing that Man United would have gone ahead to do on Judy Bellingham because they saw a lot of <clears throat> things in him. He was playing for Birmingham City at the age of 15, 16. Then that means that player is really special. You know, that's a special caliber of player. Like you see Kobe Menu at the age of 17, 18, playing for the club of Man United. That is a special talent. So, if you really find out such a player, there is no way you downplay his request. All you had to do was, we are going to get you those minutes, and you get him at the club of Man United. Then loan him. You get, if I told you, saw so the potential. So, very many clubs have gone here to do that. You know, look at Arsenal, they signed Lokonga, they promised him minutes in the first season. When he failed to get those minutes in, they loaned him out. You get? And it was something simple. Ole Gunnar Sosha was this manager that gave Mason Greenwood a 17-year-old his debut at the club of Man United, then why wouldn't you trust another 17-year-old player? You know, in your midfield that had Paul Pogba, who was really inconsistent, you know, and Real Madrid wanted to sign him and would have gone ahead to collect like 70, 80 million pounds from Paul Ebile Pogba, you know, getting Judy Bellingham into the midfield of Man United because you've gone ahead to decide to play Mason Greenwood, the same player in the same age bracket, in that team that means you can integrate judy bellingham in so you would have gone ahead to promise him that because in the world lying is not bad you sell him a lie you know you get him going and the rest is history you know so i know it would have been a close in the contract and if i told money went ahead to bleach it then there would have been a cost so you would have gone ahead to give judy bellingham a chance to prove himself trust me in that midfield that had Fred, Scott McTominay, would have gone ahead to obviously outplay them because he's a different talent of a player altogether. And for Erwin Haaland, they would have gone ahead to do the same thing. Sign him at Man United at that age and then loan him elsewhere to teams that really needed him. That is it. That's what bright clubs do. Good clubs do that because they can spot a player, young in age, who can't get into their team immediately. They really send him out after selling him out they really find themselves getting back the amount of money. Let me give you an example. Man City brought in um, Romeo Lavia. Where did they get him? They scouted him from Belgium. When Kevin De Bruyne went ahead to really do what we call a tournament in his country, home village, he called Pep Guardiola. And Pep Guardiola went ahead to come in there and really scouted that lad. You know, they brought him, and guess what? They got like, was it, uh, was it 20 million pounds from Southampton? And there was a sell-on clause that was, I think, 30%. Chelsea bought the player for 60 million pounds. They got back 20 million pounds again, and they went ahead making a profit of like 40 million pounds from the sale of this player. Now, those are deals that you're supposed to be making. That's why I come here and tell you that if you're having Omar Berada who went ahead to negotiate such deals at Man United, then we won't miss out on some of the best talents in the world because he knows how to negotiate business. He knows how to do business like this. That's these young talents. You bring them in. You try to loan them out elsewhere or sell them with a sell-on clause. And before they sell that player, they have to first come out and really ask you, you know? So... That is what these people are supposed to be doing, but they fail to do it. And that's how 
they've gone ahead to be really undressed and really exposed by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Now, lastly, let's talk about Harry Maguire. And this is what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer really said about the signing of Harry Maguire. I loved Harry Maguire as a captain. He was the leader in that group for me when I was at the club. The way he handled himself with everything happening to him at Man United is top class and just shows the character he's got. That he want in players. I'm very happy that Harry Maguire in particular shows what kind of player he is, but not, not least what kind of type and person he is. That's why I made him captain. We in no way call it Hellwood. So, I think there was something for me. I think what was bad at first, paying 80 million pounds for Harry Maguire. That was wrong because Man City pulled out of it. And that's what really makes Omar Berada a very optimistic CEO for the club of Man United because he really pulled out of the deal of Harry Maguire. They are willing to only pay 60 million pounds and Russ we want him to pay 20 more. Secondly, making him captain. Does he know the DNA of the club? Because by the, when Ashley Young left, there were experienced players at the club of Man United that would have gone ahead to become captain. For example, the goalkeeper. <clears throat> by then, he was David De Gea. There was Nemanja Matic. He had been there for some long time. You know, uh, who else was there? Mm, who else was there? Experienced players there. You know, there are very many players that could be with the captains of Man United, but the manager decided to go in for I think even Paul Ebide Pogba would have gone ahead to be the captain because he knew what the club of Man United was all about. But <clears throat> the manager opted to go in for Harry Maguire. And you've gone ahead to see to it that the first season when Ten Hag was here, Harry Maguire was struggling. Harry Maguire was 100% struggling. And guess what Ten Hag did? Take the captaincy of him. He dethroned him. And after dethroning him, Harry Maguire has gone ahead to obviously gate all that bad hen off his head and is really trying to really meet his levels. And yesterday he went ahead to celebrate his 31st birthday and that is his fifth year at the club of Man United. So I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got, got that wrong. And in that 80 million pounds, would have gone ahead to scout out like four good players, like two good players at 40, 40 million pounds and we brought them in. You get the same applies to the deal of Aaron Wan Bissaka. You know, 50 million pounds, you would have gone ahead to really get in a very good right back for like 30, and at 20, you get in another player that could have gone ahead, obviously, help us at the club of Man United. So, guys, tell me your thoughts about Oliguna Sosha leaving the Glazers naked for failed signing of Aaron Haaland and Jody Bellingham in the comment section below. What do you make about? Harry Maguire and Oli Gunnar Sosha story that I've gone ahead to present. You Rokan David is my name. You know, we sign up for now. See you later. I'm going to the Rokani Media Football to bring you the latest news and information as far as um as far as uh Real Madrid versus RB Leipzig is concerned and Man City versus Copenhagen. May the living to God bless you abundantly. Rokan David is my name. I'm out. The Muslims Baraklau Hikum. First phase. Second phase, there is a Cristiano Ronaldo story, Edson Cavani, and very many others. Ciao, ciao.